process we're doing right now is lost wax casting. It's probably the most ancient form of casting. Uh, people have been doing it for thousands and thousands of years, originally with beeswax and mud. Um, we're using plaster investment, uh, but essentially the process is exactly the same. Um, we have our wax that we start with. Uh, we take our wax and we put it on a little tree and then we put that into a container that we fill with our investment. Now before we put that all together we want to have a sense of how heavy our wax is so we know how much metal to melt and pour in. So this one wax weighs 21 grams so we'll double that 44 grams, round it up to 50 for the gate and the uh, sprue. Um, and then we'll look online wherever we can find the weight of wax. If we couldn't find that online, we could always just make a little square of wax, weigh it, and figure out how much a, say, cubic centimeter or a cubic inch of wax weighs and compare that to metal. Um, and then that'll give us our conversion for melting um, metal and pouring in there so we're not well, melting too little or too much. I'm Dave Granger. I'm the president of the Guild of Automotive Restorers, a restoration company that's been in business for over 30 years. We have restored over 2,500 cars, trucks, and other vintage vehicles. If you're curious about what goes on behind the scenes of a large restoration shop, join us at the Guild's Classics. Okay, to figure out how much metal we need, we need to find out the density of beeswax and the density of the metal we're going to use. So beeswax is 960 kilograms per meter squared. Aluminum is 2,712 kilograms per meter squared. And brass is 8,525 kilograms per meter squared. So if we see how many of these fits inside of that, we know how much uh, brass to melt or aluminum to melt. So we have, let's say, about 50 grams of beeswax. And so we'll have about 27 grams of aluminum. We'll have about 85 grams of brass. Um, so we'll melt a little more than that, pour it in, call it a day. Okay. This is the investment we're going to be using. We need to mix for every 100 grams of powder, 40 milliliters of water. We're gonna do 750 grams of powder. So 7.5 times 40 is 300 cc of water, 300 milliliters of water. So let's measure out 750 grams of this stuff. Now we need 300 grams of water just the same as 300 milliliters of water. Okay, now we're going to mix these together. We're going to pull a vacuum on the plaster, suck all the bubbles out, and then pour it into our mold. This is a vacuum pump. This pulls a vacuum on our bell jar. Beat up. Vacuum pump. There we go. And if you look inside here, you can't really see under the bell jar. It's a little crappy. All the little bubbles in here are getting bigger, floating up to the surface. Okay, it's not really bubbling much anymore. We have a plaster. I want to carefully pour it into the mold. Gonna take a little bit of masking tape. Put it around the mold so I don't have to worry about pouring out. And we want to pour the mat, the investment not on the wax but next to it, nice and gently, so it fills up and doesn't trap any air bubbles. Now I need to let this set up for at least two hours before I burn it out, but. It's gonna be a lot easier for me to let it sit up for a day or two, and then we'll do the actual casting then. Now that our investment is set up, it's been hanging out for about a day, um, we're ready to burn the wax out. So you can see the wax is inside of here. Our little tree is inside the plaster, and we're gonna put it into this uh, burnout oven. And the burnout oven is going to slowly raise the temperature 
of the uh, mold to 1200 degrees. And then once it's at 1200 degrees, it's gonna lower it down to 900 degrees Fahrenheit for actually pouring the metal in. Um, at 900 degrees, the metal that gets poured in doesn't chill too quickly, and so it can get into every little nook and cranny before it sets up. So this is a kiln that has a uh, ramping temperature controller on it, so it'll take things up nice and slowly and evenly, hold it there as long as we tell it to, and then uh, bring it back down. And this is just a little pan with a uh, grill in it, so when the wax melts out before it burns, it has some place to go so it doesn't go all over the inside of the oven. So we'll put it in the oven. Turn it on. So I have it already programmed. So it's a six segment program that takes it up to 1200 degrees, drops it down to 900, and then holds it there for up to two hours so we can pour at our leisure. So I'm just gonna press start. Start area ready, go. And now it's just gonna take care of itself and in about two hours we'll be ready to pour. Previously we figured that we had 50 grams of wax in our mold. Now I went online and checked the density of beeswax. It's 0.961 grams per centimeters cubed. I also checked the density of brass and that's 8.47 grams per centimeters cubed. So brass weighs a little more than eight times as much as the wax. So if we have 50 grams of wax times 0.961 grams per centimeters cubed, we end up finding out that we have an internal volume in our mold of 48 centimeters cubed of wax. If we want to turn that internal volume of wax into the weight in brass, we take our 48 centimeters cubed, multiply it by the density of brass, which is 8.47 grams per centimeters cubed, and then we figure out that we need 406 and a half or so grams of brass to fill our mold. So let's go over to the scale. I have some scrap brass uh, that I pulled out of the scrap bin. Um, this is a casting, so we'll reuse that. I cut it into two pieces so that it would fit inside the crucible. And that's 400, and that's exactly the amount of brass we need, so let's put in just a little bit extra to make sure that we've got more than enough brass and not too little. So here we have just shy of 500 grams of brass. We'll melt that down in the crucible and pour it into the mold when the mold is ready to come out of the oven. This is our ceramic crucible. This is what we'll be melting the brass in. So we're gonna fill the crucible with our pre-measured pieces of brass. We're gonna light the fire in the foundry and we're gonna put the crucible in there until the brass is molten. We're gonna pull it out. We're going to skim the goo off the top. Uh, those are the impurities that rise to the surface. And then we'll take our mold out of the oven, put it onto the vacuum casting table and pour the molten brass in it. Once the brass goes in and hardens, we'll take it out and dunk it in the water and that will help dissolve all the plaster and hopefully we'll have two nice little parts. Okay, so I'm just gonna light a piece of tissue paper and put it in the foundry. So when I turn the gas on, it's got something to ignite it. And... up for five or ten minutes. Once it's uh, glowing in there, we'll put our charged crucible in and once the crucible's melted we can pour the brass. So our foundry's burning pretty well. Uh, the flames even itself out. It's gotten warm inside so we're gonna take the lid off. We're gonna put our charged crucible inside, put the lid back on and wait for it to melt. Now we'll turn off the gas, take the lid off, and 
nice and hot. And the crucible comes out. Goes into the holder. We will pour. In there. The button right there is still too soft. Once this hardens enough that it's totally solid, we'll put it in the water and then it can, then the plaster will dissolve. Fingers crossed. That worked. Okay. So now we can take it up to the bead blaster, give it a light bead blasting get rid of all of the investment and see how it came out. These are our castings. The brass, they turned out really well. We had a little bit of blowout because I let the wax get a little too close to the button, but it's on an area that's just smooth, so a hand file will take care of that. And the last step will be to just take a hacksaw, cut them off of the sprues, and do the final sanding and polishing. But this is how you do a lost wax casting.